For this section, we're going to be talking about disorders of galactose metabolism. For the step one, there are two disorders that we have to know. The first is galactokinase deficiency, and the second is classic galactosemia. So these might seem similar, but they're actually very different diseases, and you should be able to pick them out pretty quickly on the step one. But I'll go over the biochemical processes so we can really understand what's going on. First, let's talk about where we get galactose. So obviously, we get galactose from our diet, and we can get it straight from there into our intestinal cells and into our blood. The other way that we can get it is through a molecule called lactose, which if you remember is a disaccharide, and is broken down in the cells into galactose and glucose. And if you remember, the enzyme that does this is called beta-galactosidase. So there's two ways we can get it, straight from the diet or also from lactose. This will be important later on. Once galactose enters the blood, the cell has to be able to pick it up, trap it into the cell, and then use it for metabolism. So let's, let's, start, let's start from the beginning here. So galactose is taken up from the cell, and the way that it traps it into the cell is using something called galactokinase, okay? And that, since it's a kinase, uses ATP and that creates galactose 1-phosphate, and when you have that, it traps into the cell so that the cell can use it. Then it uses something called galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase, okay? And from that, it can make glucose 1-phosphate. And remember, glucose 1-phosphate, the cell can really use because we can use it for glycolysis or gluconeogenesis and make a bunch of ATP and stuff from that. But, so the way that it takes gl galactose 1-phosphate into glucose 1-phosphate is using this uridyl transferase, okay? <laughs> uridyl transferase. And it uses that by taking UDP glucose and switching that with UDP galactose. So as you can see, this galactose over here switched up here, and this UDP gl and this glucose here switched up here. So they just pretty much switched places. Using an enzyme called 4-epimerase, we can actually get back to uh, UDP glucose. So let's, so let's just review again. So you have galactose, and that uses a kinase to be trapped into cells galactose 1-phosphate. Then using uridyl transferase, let me move this back up, using uridyl transferase, it uses UDP glucose along with galactose 1-phosphate, uridyl transferase makes glucose 1-phosphate, and then also UDP galactose. And we can go back from UDP galactose to UDP glucose using 4-epimerase, okay? And so we're actually not done yet. So another thing is that if you have a bunch of galactose in your cell, your cell will actually use an enzyme called aldose reductase, okay? And you'll we'll see this enzyme come up again, but aldose reductase, and that will create something called galactidol. And as you remember, these, um, galactidol has a high, um, will create a high osmotic pressure, okay? So just keep that in mind, okay? So the first one we're going to be talking about is galactokinase deficiency. So let's review for a second. You have galactose, and it uses this kinase to trap it inside the cell. So if we have a deficiency of this kinase, then what are we going to have? We're not going to have any uh, galactose 1-phosphate, and we're just going to have an increase in galactose. And this galactose is going to be floating around in the blood, but it actually doesn't cause that much problems. Um, it's actually a relatively mild condition, and it's autosomal recessive, and obviously it's autosomal recessive because if you have two alleles of galactokinase, even if you lose one, you'll still have enough galactokinase to do the rest. So this is an autosomal recessive um, condition. This galactose will appear in the blood as well as the urine. Remember when I said before that the, the other thing galactose can do is it can use the enzyme aldose reductase and turn into galactitol. This galactitol is actually also trapped inside the cell, just like glucose 1-phosphate is. And if it, uh, if it, since it gets trapped in the cell, it increases the osmotic pressure and causes water to rush into the cell. So sometimes infants with galactokinase deficiency, galactokinase deficiency can get infantile cataracts. Okay? And the way that you'll see this is very mild, but the way you'll see this is you'll see a failure to track objects. Obviously because they have cataracts, they can't really see that well or to develop a social smile. And social smile is obviously required that the infant has to be able to see the smile. So you won't have, you won't have the ability to track objects or develop a social smile. So this is actually relatively um, benign except for that.
So this next condition is called classic galactosemia, and it's actually a much more serious condition than galactokinase, as we talked about in the last slide. So let's go back to our metabolism. We have galactose. We have our kinase, right? ADP. We get galactose 1-phosphate. Does anyone remember what the next step was? That's right. It uses a uretal transferase, and, it, and along with UDP glucose, and in making UDP galactose at the end, it creates glucose 1-phosphate. And glucose 1-phosphate can be used for other uh, processes, such as glycolysis or gluconeogenesis. Now, in this, in classic galactosemia, you have a deficiency in galactose 1-phosphate uretal transferase. So this is where your deficiency is. And now, instead of having an increase of just galactose, you have an increase in galactose 1-phosphate also. And this is way more serious because of this phosphate group here. It, it's, since it has a charge, it gets stuck inside that cell and just it just accumulates in that cell like crazy. So you have the galactose, you have the kinase going over here, and then you just have a ton of galactose 1-phosphate um, uh, increasing in your cell. And even if... in more serious defects can even cause a potassium, uh, sorry, a phosphate uh, depletion in your body because you're using all your phosphates for here. So your infant will actually not just have infantile cataracts, but also have mental retardation, will have failure to thrive, will have jaundice in the liver. Okay, so this can actually create a ton of problems, and, and you know your the infant is, has a, a serious condition. And remember, this this uh, this react with aldous reductase also happens, the one creating galactitol. So that's why you also have the cataract. So along with the galactitol and the glucose 1-phosphate increasing your cell, you have all these things. As I said, failure to thrive, jaundice, hepatomegaly, infotoxic cataracts, and mental retardation. So what would be the treatment for this, or how would you prevent any exacerbation of this? So obviously you would exclude galactose from the diet. That's one, what's one way you can reduce it. And what's another way you can reduce it? It's actually decreasing lactose from the diet. Because remember, as I said... Lactose is created into, uh, lactose is made, um, sorry, lactose is broken down into galactose and glucose. So that's one way that we can remove it from the diet.